Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, I hope you have a nice evening. Tonight we are going to talk about the APA and what is the difference between Embeddable and the mapped superclass. So, what is the uh, problem that we want to, to, to solve? First of all, we are dealing with Java, we are dealing with the APA, and we are dealing with inheritance. So let's, see that we, let's say that we have a superhero, we have a hero class right here. This is our hero class. It is an entity. So this is an entity that we have right here. This hero class right here, it, uh, it also, there's, there's a table that represents this hero uh, class behind it. And I have a lot of fields there. I have an, I have an ID field, of course. And um, uh, maybe I would have something like, it could be like a power level or something like that, super power level. Um, power level. Uh, maybe there's a city for where the hero actually is right now. Um, and yeah, so that, that that is what I have for my hero right here. I want to extend in, in this situation right here. I want to extend some uh, a, a character class, character class, and uh, this should also be extended by non-heroes. So we have a character class right here, because the, these characters they already they always have an age and they always have a name, right? But I don't want to also to yeah I don't want to create a separate table for having this information right here, and I don't want to bother about having an ID here either. That and this means that this cannot be an entity. This is where the mapped super class comes in. So this is where we use the mapped super class. If I annotate, if I create a class that matches this table right here, named character, and I, if I annotate it with mapped super class, then um, then I can actually extend it from the hero class, and then I will get these extra fields right here placed inside the table that we have uh, in the hero table right here. Of course, I have to, if you're using something like liquid base, then of course you have to remember uh, to, of course, also create those fields. Then we have something called the embeddable. That is if you want to organize some of your fields. So maybe you have something like a weapon, uh, a, a weapon uh, name, weapon name. And you also have some kind of like weapon power or something like that, weapon power. Um, and uh, maybe some durability right here. So this durability right here, it, it, is, it is all re uh, related to um, to a weapon. Um, it is okay that it's in the same table in the database wise, but in your Java code, you will really like that to be in a separate, uh, in se uh, to, to be placed in separate uh, and organized in a separate class. This is where you would actually use an embeddable class. Um, let me just show an example of both of these things right now. So this is my superhero project. You might have seen it before from other demos that I have right here. And I think I have actually chosen Java 21 today. Let me just check. Um, no, no, no. Let me just check right here. It's Java 21 that we're using. Just uh, yeah. And I've created this project uh, early on by pressing File, New, Project right here. Then I chose Spring. Uh, Spring Initializer, I chose Java, and I think I chose Gradle actually for this project right here. Uh, I chose Java 21, and I chose, the, yeah, then I said next, and then I added all the modules that I needed, and those are the web module. I needed the data model, the DT data model right here, the JPA model, uh, Spring Data JPA right there. I also added the H2, and I also added, uh, I also added Lombok. Yeah, always say at Lombok also, then you save yourself a ton of uh, coding. So I added those things, and then I created this project right here, and of course I created one entity. Whenever you create an entity, whenever you annotate one class with entity, then there's something that you, that you need. You need, to, uh, you need to have an ID annotation also, so that means you need to have an ID field. And you don't want to do that when you're using abstractions. So here we have the hero entity right here, and I'm extending the abstract character. If you don't know what the super builder is, why I have the super builder right here, then watch the other video where I'm just explaining to you what the super builder is and when to use it. But here we have the uh, abstract character right here. So I'm extending the abstract character. It is not an entity. It is a mapped superclass. It is a mapped superclass. It's not an entity. If I had made it as an entity, then it would have to have an ID and it would uh, also have to have be a separate table. Um, so this is not an entity, but it is something that we want to extend to give extra um, to give extra fields, to give extra columns to our table. And that is why we say mapped superclass. And it comes from the Jakarta persistence right here. And it is the mapped superclass right here. You just annotate it with add mapped superclass. Then um, then it is known that you want to, uh, yeah, then, you're, then you're able to uh, extend an existing class with abstract character. 
That is really cool. That is really awesome. I'll, I'll show that it actually works in just a minute because we have the H2 database that we can actually see how the, the how the table is, has been created by the APA and Hibernate by default. So uh, here we have the hero entity. So now we want to do something new. We want to create a new class right here. I, I'm right-clicking and I'm saying new Java class right here. And then we want a, a hero, uh, just a weapon. Uh, weapon, uh, weapon. And it is a class. Yes, it is. Yes, add it to Git. Thank you very much. And here we have a private, private string and name of the weapon. So this is a weapon name. Weapon name. Of course, if you want to decide the column, uh, you, actually you can just have name right here. Then you can have add column right here, and then you can say. This is a weapon name like this. So here we have the name. And then we have a all arcs constructor, no arcs constructor. You need to have the no arcs constructor or else you'll be in trouble. You will also have the super builder right here. And again, if you don't want to watch when to use the super builder, then watch the video about the super builder. And another thing we want to add now is embeddable. Look there, it's right there. Embeddable, Jakarta persistence. So, embeddable. What embeddable means? It means is that all of these fields that we have right here, those will be placed on the uh, table where they're actually used. So that means they will be placed in the same table as the hero, um, as our hero table. In just a minute, when we add a weapon to the hero, then we will just embed all of those fields to, um, yeah, to to, to the hero table. Right, let us see. So the weapon, and then we have a power level, power level for this weapon right here. And what else could we have with the weapon? Yeah, there was durability, private and uh, durability. It could be a number from 1 to 100 or something like that. Durability, like that. And we want some getters, getters. We want some setters, like this. So we have getters, setters. We have embeddable. We have um, super build. Yes, I think that is actually OK now. And of course, in column right here, I forgot something else. Well, I'll say name equal to. Power level, durability. If you don't do anything and you're using H2 or MSS Girl, for instance, then you or Postgres, actually a lot of databases, then you will have um, this converted into snake case. That means a power level will be a power underscore level when you go and look in at uh, uh, yeah, for columns in your database afterwards. You can also choose, like I did right here, to actually explicitly, explicitly write which uh, column name that you want. That is also fine. You can choose both. So let us go to hero entity right here. So now we will add a weapon, private weapon, and then we say weapon. So this means that this all of the fields inside weapon will actually be uh, placed and embedded into the hero table and into the hero entity. Um, let us actually see if that works. We have some hero. We have some default data right here. So here we have the hero builder. Let's try to give one of them. We will give Mike a weapon right here. So we say weapon. Then we say weapon that builder built. And what should the name be? Weapon could be name that could be like a tomato. Tomato. We, we can throw. We can uh, we can throw the tomato. We have a durability of one. It can only be used once. And then we have a power level of uh, of one. It's of two. Let's just name two. So we have a tomato right there. And of course, we can also give. Robin Hood, a weapon that is usually a bow. We would have a bow. Durability, that could be 100 instead. And power level, maybe that, that would be 50. And we can also leave out uh, the rest of the heroes. They don't need any weapon right now. It could be, it does need to be mandatory. So let us start up, up our application. What happens when we start up our application? Then this is a component. So this will be created uh, in the Spring context. That's how Spring works. It will take one of these and place into the big bucket of uh, Spring uh, of Spring beans of Spring uh, instances of classes. And um, after when it's done with that, then this code will be called right here, post construct. That means that it will actually create a bunch of heroes right here. Of course, all of the dependencies to this class right here needs to be fulfilled also. So it also has to uh, be done creating a hero repository. Um, yeah, 
Another way of doing this is actually to listen for the application started event instead. If you want to do that, that's also fine. For testing and for demo purposes, it's much easier to do it at post-construct because that means that um, it is while your application is actually creating your code context, then it will also create this data and you don't have to think about that, um, whether the data is already there when you run your tests or, or not. Um, so when, when you're dealing with Spring Boot Test, then you know that this has been run when you are starting up with, with your tests. But that's another story. So let us just start our application and see what actually happens. So we'll say localhost has two console. It should just take some seconds before it start up. Yes, go, go, go. Start up. Let's see if it works. We did not, maybe we, no, we did not introduce any errors yet. So we have this, this is our memory, my memory database right here, and I will say username password is ASA. Then we go to our he hero table, and then we make a select. Let's see how the hero table actually looks, what it looks like. <gasps> what is this hero table right here? Okay, this is very interesting. So we have an ID in our hero table. We have the name, we have superpower, we have weapon, we have power level, we have your ability, and we have age. That is awesome, buddy. Mike, if you go look at the hero entity class, what, what do you see there? How many fields do you see there? We only see ID, superpower, and weapon. <coughs> okay. So this is actually qu quite cool that we have actually taken all of these fields. We have taken the fields from abstract character, which is name and age. Those are right here, name and age over here. So those are being embedded into the hero, and now we have those there. Okay. And we also have... It, it looks like a property of the of the hero. So we have a weapon for the hero right here, which is just an, an extra uh, member variable, right? And and suddenly also we have suddenly we have those. Some, suddenly we have those embedded. Uh, yeah, that is that is the weapon is embedded and the abstract character that is the mapped superclass. That's that how we how we how we added those right there. Um, so here we have the weapon right now, and we have embedded all of the fields from the weapon into the into the hero table so we have name power level right there power level right there name is right there uh, sorry weapon name is right here we have a bone tomato and then we have some null values because we did not want to give a weapon to all of our heroes we have the tomato for mike there and his superpower is that he can eat many burgers in a row um yes then we have the bow for robin hood right there and we have the durability 1 and 100. We have the power level 50 and 2. So we're actually quite happy. This is actually quite awesome. And you can also see the structure if you press plus in the left side right here. Age, durability, power level, ID, name, and superpower, and weapon. Awesome, 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 Mike. So tonight we learned about embeddable and the mapped uh, superclass. So we have it right here. Abstract class is is a mapped superclass. And when we want to use the member variable, the weapon, then it is embeddable if you want it in the same table. Of course, if we did not want it in the same table, then we could just create a normal one-to-one -one relation that we would have two tables and our select would be quite it would be a slightly different, of course. We would have to go and cross uh, and join those two. Uh, tables and then we will get the same data out again. Um, when you use embeddable, then it's it's when you do not um, when if the, if these heroes right here, if these heroes could share a weapon and sometimes could throw the weapon to each other, then of course you would not choose embeddable. Then you would uh, then they would it would be in a separate table. So then you could just change the ID of, of which hero actually uh, has it right now in the hand. Uh, and, and then they could actually help each other by throwing these weapons to each other. They can, now, right now, they cannot throw the weapon to each other because all of these fields right here, those are embedded and put on top of the hero right here. Of course, you could also change the values uh, yeah, one at a time there if you want to. So it, 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 it uh, of course, it, this deter it is determined by your data structure, of course. And uh, I just want to show you that you have these two options right here. Mapped superclass, when you want to extend something, and the embeddable when you have a member variable with a class where you have some logic where you have and uh, yeah it is it is mostly it is, of course it is used when you have some logic that you just want to put and wrap into the weapon right here because maybe you had some methods on the weapon that you don't want to you don't want to pollute your main hero class with a lot of stuff regarding weapon because you could also have like a 
an address, and um, there could be a best friend or a sidekick. Yeah, there could also be uh, a yeah, yeah, main villain. Uh, there could be a lot of things uh, on this hero right here. And uh, if you create, if you start creating methods right on this hero right here, then uh, at some point you will get up, uh, end up with some mess. You would end up with a huge class. Um, there are different ways to actually handle that. You can actually create wrappers. So you wrap the hero with the um, with the business context that it's in. So let's say that you want to deal with a, a villain, then you could create a villain wrapper for your uh, the, for your super uh, for your for your superhero, and then you can wrap your uh, hero in that, and then you can have methods on, on that class right there. I've also created another video where I show you how to wrap um, where how to, uh, where I show how to wrap other classes to. Uh, to get simple and co and context-driven uh, development instead of just having one class where you dump all of your code in inside. Um, yeah, try to keep your classes small and to when you are and if you have one method if you have a method that is more than one page then you should definitely split it up into uh, more methods and maybe also to more classes actually. You could create wrapper classes, and you can also create uh, other classes that can be extended. If you don't know whether you should extend, uh, create some extension or not, then usually you should not create those extensions. You should create uh, wrapper classes instead. It gives um, it gives a better overview, and sometimes it can be quite difficult to actually debug if you have a lot of levels of abstraction. Again, this is just my opinion. You would probably find some other Java developers that loves that you can extend, and now you can also implement interfaces that has default methods and, and all that. I actually like context-driven wrappers instead. That is, I think that's much more clean. Yes. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for all of your comments. Have a great evening and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.